In this example, we're told we have air flowing isentropically in a converging diverging nozzle uh, with a given exit area, so let's sketch that out. Here's our converging diverging nozzle sketch. We're told the exit area is 0 0.001 square meters. The nozzle is fed from a large plenum where the stagnation conditions are 350 Kelvin and 1 megapascal absolute, so that means that the stagnation pressure up here is 1 megapascal absolute and the stagnation temperature is 350 Kelvin. Nozzle has a design back pressure, so the uh, let me write this down. So the design back pressure of 87.5 kilopascals. Now, when I, we say the design back pressure, that means that at the design case, the back pressure and the exit pressure are the same. So the exit pressure at design would be the same as the back pressure at design. It's 87.5 kilopascals, absolute. So just again, to recap that. When the nozzle is operating at design conditions, the back pressure and exit pressure are the same. So that means that the exit pressure at design conditions would be the same as the back pressure, which is 87.5 kilopascals. But that this particular nozzle is now operating at a back pressure of 50 kilopascals. So it's actually operating at a pressure lower than the design pressure. And then we're asked to determine uh, the exit Mach number for these conditions and the mass flow rate through the nozzle. So let's go ahead and start with the exit Mach number. Uh, just to kind of show this graphically what this looks like, let's, let me plot out the pressure uh, divided by the stagnation pressure as a function of position. And here we have the throat, and here we have the exit. And let me just sketch out a few of the pressure curves. We've done this in lecture. You, you've seen this sort of thing before. We'll call this the critical case where we reach choked flow conditions. And then let me just draw a few other ones in here. Okay, so you've seen this kind of plot before from our lectures. Uh, this particular case right here when it goes like that, that's right when the flow just becomes choked. This one down here is the design conditions. So this is when the exit pressure and the back pressure are exactly the same when the flow in the diverging section is supersonic. So remember, this curve corresponds to supersonic flow in the, ex in the diverging section. So this one, so here's the exit, here's the throat. <clears throat> this one corresponds to the exit pressure equaling the back pressure. This is design conditions. Now we're told, and, and that one, by the way, is when the pressure would be 87.5 kilopascals, absolute. Now we're told that the pressure is actually 50 kilopascals for the back pressure. So that means we're down here somewhere. So what happens is as the flow comes out of the exit, it'll go through some expansion fans, kind of a complex uh, flow behavior outside the nozzle and then eventually come into equilibrium with the surroundings. We call this case the underexpanded case. So we have an underexpanded case in this example in this uh, problem. It's underexpanded because the nozzle area at the exit isn't large enough to match the back pressure. So we haven't expanded the flow enough to reach the back pressure conditions. So this is the case, I'll highlight it, this is the case that we're currently dealing with. And you'll see that for that particular case, the flow inside the entire nozzle is actually isentropic. We don't have any shock waves here for this particular highlighted case. So we can use the isentropic conditions everywhere, or the isentropic relations everywhere inside that nozzle. So we'll do that to find what the exit Mach number is. So let's go ahead and work that out. So I'll just use the, so we know information about the, the pressure at the exit. We know the stagnation pressure. And I apologize for the noise you're hearing in the background, but there's some construction going on. So you might hear some, some extraneous noises there. Okay, so I'm using the isentropic pressure relation here, and I'm going to apply it specifically at the exit because the flow is all isentropic up to that point. 
And in this expression, I'm going to solve for the Mach number. I know the stagnation pressure. Stagnation pressure was given as 1 megapascal. I also know the exit pressure for this. This is the 87.5 kilopascals absolute. Now it's not the 50 kilopascals because 50 kilopascals is the back pressure which is way down here. We want the exit pressure which is still at the 87.5. Okay, so that's what our exit pressure is. And I can to solve then this equation for the Mach number. By the way, the K value is 1.4 since we're dealing with air. So when I solve this for the Mach number, it comes out to be 2.24. So that's our Mach number right at this point. Okay, so it's supersonic. So that is part A of this problem. Now part B is to find the mass flow rate through the nozzle, and we can do this a couple of different ways. Uh, one one relatively easy way is to recognize that we're dealing with a choked flow since of course we reach a Mach number one at the throat so the flow is choked and we could use the choked flow mass flow rate so we know that our flow is choked so we'll use the choked flow mass flow rate let me write what that is this you could get from your formula sheet which is exactly what I did so let me just write this down Okay, so there's our choked flow mass flow rate. We know most everything in this problem, or in this equation. Of course, we know the stagnation pressure. That's the one meg megapascal. We know K is 1.4. We know R is 287 joules per kilogram Kelvin. And then the stagnation temperature was given as, let's go back up here and see, it was 350 Kelvin. The one thing that we don't know is A star. So that would be the area at the throat because the throat is at sonic conditions because the pressure there is P star. So to find that, we can make use of the uh, sonic area ratio, A star over, um, uh, it's going to be, I'm sorry, I flipped that upside down. It should be A over A star. Again, you could get this from your formula sheet. And um, I, I didn't write it down but I can tell you that it'll be a function of the Mach number. So just take a look at your formula sheet to see what that formula looks like. But in the end, it'll be A over A star is a function of the Mach number. And so the A that I know in this problem is the area of the exit. And I also now know the Mach number at the exit. So I'm going to do A E over A star is equal to the function of the Mach number at the exit. And again, I know these values. The Mach number at the exit is 2.24. You know, the area of the exit is 0 0.01 square meters. So I can solve this for A star, and then I can plug that in up here and get the mass flow rate. So that's one way you could work this problem. It's not really the way that I worked it out when I put in all the numbers. So I, unfortunately, I don't have the numbers here for you for A star. Um, I can tell you that the mass flow rate ultimately will be 1.04 kilograms per second. And I, I know that because I worked it out a different way. So that's one way you can do this problem. Let me show you the way that I did it when I worked it out initially. Uh, when, I, when I initially worked it out, I just actually went straight from kind of our standard mass flow rate relation, just mass flow rates, the density times the velocity times the area. And specifically, I found all of these at the exit. And uh, at the exit, of course, I know the area is 0 0.001 square meters, but I don't know the velocity or the density at the exit. Now, I do know the Mach number at the exit, and if I could get the speed of sound at the exit, then I can find the velocity at the exit. So let me just write that down. Velocity at the exit will be the speed of sound at the exit times, oops, times the Mach number at the exit. Speed of sound at the exit is square root of KRT at the exit. So here I know this, the specific heat ratio, I know the gas constant, I know the Mach number, I, I need to find the temperature at the exit. Well, I can get that in a manner similar to what I did for the pressure. I know it's just going to be a function of the Mach number. So I could write T at the exit over the stagnation temperature. It's 1 plus K minus 1 over 2 Mach number at the exit squared. I'll raise to the minus 1 power. I know the Mach number at the exit. I know the stagnation temperature, so I can solve for the exit temperature. And when you plug in the numbers for that, it comes out to be 
um, 174.5 Kelvin. Now that I have that, I can find the speed of sound at the exit. That's just right here. So I plug in the numbers for that and I get the speed of sound is 264.8 meters per second. And now that I know that, I can find the velocity at the exit. And I find that using this expression right here. Okay, so this velocity at the exit comes out to be 500 93.8 meters per second. All right, so I've now got the velocity at the exit here. The last thing I need to find is the density at the exit. Well, to find the density at the exit, since I'm dealing with air, I can treat it as an ideal gas. So the density at the exit will be the pressure at the exit divided by the gas constant divided by the temperature at the exit. And I know all of these values. The, the pressure at the exit is the... Um, it's going to be the 87.5 kilopascals. Remember to use an absolute pressure there. And then the temperature at the exit, we just worked out moments ago, it's 174.5 Kelvin. Remember to use an absolute temperature there. Gas constant, we know. So you can solve for the density at the exit. That comes out to be 1.747 kilograms per cubic meter. So you can plug that in up here. And then when you plug in all those numbers, the mass flow rate comes out to be 1.04 kilograms per second. So that's uh, a second way you could work this out. So I took kind of a longer route here just by using the kind of our standard expression for the mass flow rate. That's a little bit longer because I had to find the velocity, which I used the Mach number relation to get that, as well as our adiabatic flow relation to get the temperature. Density, I used the ideal gas law to get to that. And again, an alternate way to do it is just recognizing that the flow is choked and using the choked flow mass flow rate. There we had to find A star, which is the area of the throat. And for that, I used our sonic area ratio relation, which I didn't write out the function, but you can get it from the formula sheet. And by solving this, you can figure out what A star is and plug it in there. So those are the, um, the two ways you can get the mass flow rate. So I think the, the probably the hardest part of this problem is just recognizing that we're given information about the design back pressure, which tells us what the exit pressure would be at design conditions, but we're operating at a back pressure of less than the design back pressure. So that puts us in the underexpanded state, which means that the pressure at the exit will be equal to this 87.5 once you go out of the nozzle exit, then you go through these kind of expansion fan, oblique shock, sort of uh, mock cone development um, sort of sequence, something we talk about in a lecture, uh, and then eventually come into equilibrium with the back pressure. So that's probably the hardest part is just kind of recognizing we're on this kind of purple highlighted curve. Okay, we'll go ahead and end it there.